Good morning. I'm Amy Glasscock with NASIO. When I married my husband, Will, a little over six years ago, I did so knowing full well that before we settled down and started a family and did all of those things that everyone expected us to do, we were going to spend two years in the Peace Corps, sweating, wearing crazy, crazy fabrics, and saving the world. And I married him anyway. At the time, we were working as trade association lobbyists in Washington, DC. When we found out we had been assigned to work as English teachers in Indonesia, I would lay in my very comfortable bed at night in my climate-controlled condo, we were very fancy, and I would wonder what it would be like to sweat all day, if I would have to cover my hair in the world's largest Muslim country, if I would be dodging volcanoes or tsunamis, and what it would be like to go without toilet paper for two years. By the time we had put all of our things in storage and said many cheerful goodbyes, we knew the only thing left to do was just go for it. Turns out that giving up creature comforts isn't that hard. You expect things to be different. It's only weird at first, not just the toilet paper. And the first few months are so exciting and stimulating that you don't care that you don't understand what anyone is saying or that people are staring at you wondering what this white girl is doing in their village. It also helped that our first few months were in a beautiful mountain town. I had a wonderful host family and I was making a lot of new Peace Corps friends. But then the honeymoon phase wears off and culture shock sets in. The Peace Corps gives you this great graph that plots all the highs and lows of your two years of service, and it is remarkably accurate and reassuring. Every now and then, we would go back to it to make sure we were on track. So <clears throat> culture shock hits you right about the time you leave all of your new friends and head to your permanent site. And unlike most volunteers, I was married, so I had that built-in support. And I also had some wonderful teachers in my new school. I was assigned to work at a madrasa, which in Indonesia is just a public high school with a few extra religion classes. Obviously, I was the only non-Muslim, but they welcomed me with open arms and no, never asked me to cover my hair or change my beliefs. We've probably all started a new job and looked for that one person to take us under their wing. For me, that was Mrs. Kiswati, or Boo Kiss as I called her. My first day of school, I sat in the teacher's lounge without my own desk, sticking out like a sore thumb, and realized that everyone was speaking Javanese, not the Indonesian language I had been studying for the last 10 weeks. Bukis looked at me and said sympathetically, I know how you're feeling. From then on, she and I became great friends. Will and I spent a lot of time with Bukis, her husband, three girls, and later her new baby boy. I learned a lot about Indonesian schools and culture and Islam from her. And through our friendship, she came to realize that dubbed episodes of the American TV show's Growing Pains and Friends weren't the best representation of American culture. <laughs> Eventually, that culture shock wore off, and I settled into the rhythms of our new life. One of the most surprising joys of Peace Corps was the creativity that comes from limited resources. After several months of eating delicious Indonesian food, it was not so delicious anymore. So we found some cheese and some local ingredients and made a pizza. We're not going to win any photography awards with this, but the fact that we took a picture tells you everything you need to know. We would use anything we could find locally to make food that was familiar to us. We became pretty decent cooks, making eggplant parmesan, biscuits and gravy, pumpkin pie, meatloaf out of tempeh, and every Peace Corps volunteer's favorite Mexican food. You appreciate the little things. After sweating it out for several weeks or months, it would be time for a trip to the city or to one of Indonesia's amazing beaches. Three hours on a couple of rickety buses and one hour on a plane, and we'd find ourselves in Kuta Bali, or the Myrtle Beach for Australian tourists. We would unapologetically seek out American comforts like Burger King or Dairy Queen, not exactly our ideal date night in our DC days, or now for that matter, but I cannot overstate the level of anticipation and excitement that a Western meal, an air-conditioned hotel room, and a cold beer can create in the heart of a Peace Corps volunteer. A little bit of deprivation makes life so much sweeter. The best lesson I brought home with me, though, was probably patience. After ridiculously crowded buses, being forced on stage to entertain people, attracting the kind of attention that only an alien landing should deserve, or yes, a volcano cutting a conference short, a delayed flight now and then isn't such a big deal. Commitment, relationship building, creativity, appreciation of the little things and patience. We'll call those leadership lessons. 
Two years later, I carry those lessons with me daily, and thanks to the miracles of modern technology, Bukis and I are still comparing notes, this time on raising babies. Terima kasih banyak. Thank you so much.